Hi guys, my name is Victoria Cheng and today we're going to be doing some mobility and flow movements. So today is suitable for all levels and it doesn't matter what discipline you come from, it, whether you're a runner or you're a boxer or you're a yogi. Um, we're going to be doing low impact movements today, but it'll help build strength. It's a full body workout, so it doesn't isolate any single muscle group. So I highly encourage mobility movements for anybody of any age, especially seniors um, because in this way you really get to work on your flexibility and again strength training from head to toe okay so um, the best part about this is that you actually don't really need any equipment in fact i'm wearing shoes today but you don't need to wear shoes uh, just grab a towel a bottle of water the towel is just to wipe the floor so you don't slip on your own sweat okay now with that in mind let's just go straight into some stretching warm-ups and we're going to get right into it okay Hands on your hips, feet shoulder width apart. We're just gonna roll out our necks. Nice, simple rotation. Clockwise. Three, two, one, and change direction. Four, three, two, and one. All right, from here, we're gonna roll back those shoulders. Nice, small circles, push them up to your ears and back. Four, three, two, and one. And bigger circles now, like you're swimming backwards. This is not the proper swimming technique, but you guys know what I mean. So just roll them backwards. Four, three, two, and one. Now we're gonna roll our shoulders forward. Again, small circles. Get all those cricks. Loosen up those joints. Three, two, one, and bigger circles. Four, three, two, and one. Okay, now we're gonna twist um, at the torso, left and right. You can extend that arm out if you want. Four, three, two, and one. Going into hip rotations next. It's really, Push those hips out, nice wide circles. And three, two, and one. Change direction. Loosen everything up. And three, two, and one. Okay, from here we're gonna bend into a half squat. You put your elbows in between your knees, push out those knees. I'm gonna rock back and forth. Open up those hip flexors. Three, two, and one. From here, we're gonna extend our legs straight up and squat straight down. Bring that bum down to your calf as far as possible. Let's do it. Three more. Three, two, and one. Now, put both hands on the floor. We're gonna step out and do a lateral stretch. Step out to the right. Sink into that stretch. You can put your hands on the floor if you need to balance, otherwise, out in front of you. Now, I'm sunk down really low. If you're not that flexible yet, it's okay. Don't force it. Even if you're up here, that's fine. Just make sure you really feel that stretch in your hamstring. Keep that heel on the floor. So don't go up in your toes. Keep that heel on the floor. Point and flex as well. All right, now I'm going to walk it over to the other side. Okay, walk it over and down. And point and flex. Four, three, two, and one. Okay, last but not least, both hands on the floor. We're gonna stand in a uh, A-frame. Sorry, an A-frame here. So have your hips up nice and high. You're just gonna pedal it out. Lift your left heel 
followed by your right heel back and forth. Okay, we're just going to stretch out those calves. From here, I want you guys to take that left leg, step into a lunge. Do a gentle bounce out, up and down. Open up those hip flexors. For those of you who want a deeper stretch, you can go ahead and put your elbows on the ground. Three, two, and one. Okay, we're gonna switch sides. Same thing. Keep that back leg straight. Gentle bounce. Stretch it out. Again, you can put your elbows on the floor for a deeper stretch. Okay, now let's activate everything, really warm everything up with a really simple movement. Okay, we're just gonna do five of these. I want you to bend down into a squat and walk it out into a high plank. Walk it back in to a squat. For those of you who wanna push yourselves a little further, feel free to add in a push up when you walk it out. Okay, so let's do four more. Squat, walk it out, push up. Walk it back up. Okay, or you don't have to do the push up if you don't want to. Or if this is your first time working out, it's okay. Don't push yourself too hard. Technique is a lot more important. And last one squat down, walk it out. back up. All right. Um, before we get into our animal or primal flow movement that I'm going to be going into, we need to really stretch out our wrists. We're going to be on our hands and our knees. We're going to be close to the ground for the rest of this workout. Okay, so I want you to clasp both hands together, interlace those fingers, elbows, and uh, forearms touching. Just going to rotate your wrists. I want you to kind of, uh, I guess, sort of appreciate the sort of uh, range of motion that your wrists have. Okay, make sure they're nice and loose. Okay, next up, keeping those fingers interlocked, you can see that from elbow to elbow, it is a flat plane. We're gonna do something sort of like a wave. So you're gonna push back into your wrist here. Kind of create this little wave back and forth. Really stretch out your wrists. You're gonna find this really crucial and later when your wrists get a little bit sore, um, you can just go back to these stretches to help relax them a bit. Okay, uh, next up, just put the back of your hands together. Feel that stretch. And last wrist stretch. I don't know, you guys know the hang 10, kind of surfer or manta ray symbol to shake out those wrists. Nice and easy. All right, that was the easy part. Let's get into the basics, okay? So I'm gonna give you guys two sets of basics to work with. The first set, we are gonna start with something most of you guys are familiar with, the bear crawl. Now, I really wanna go into the technique of the bear crawl to make sure that you're doing it right no matter what application you're applying this to. For your bear crawl, you're on all fours, sort of like a baby crawl. And make sure your shoulders are stacked directly over your wrist. Your hands aren't too far apart, your shoulder width apart. Okay, other things to note, same thing with your knees, shoulder width apart. A common mistake I see is uh, overextension their knees are too far out. Make sure your knees are directly in line with your belly button. Okay, so that's a good point of reference to go with. Um, I think for a lot of us, the first time we do is we feel like our hands and our knees are too close together. But ultimately, um, the technique will help prevent injuries and it also works your core and your leg 
hands a lot more, okay? Now here, you're gonna lift your knees off the ground just an inch off the ground, okay? So even when you're moving in a bear crawl movement, you wanna make sure you stay nice and close to the ground, okay? So no high hips, keep them nice and low. Now when it comes to movement, you're gonna be moving the opposite hand and leg at the same time. Left hand, right leg. At the same time, land at the same time. Small movement. Again, we wanna work on technique here, not about speed or distance. Same thing we're going back with. Nice controlled movement, and I promise you, it is a lot harder work out this way as well. You can do it in your own living room at home. Okay, so that's the most basic bear crawl of the nose of the knee. Um, front feet will be going to something called loaded feet. Okay, so now you're in your bear crawl position. You're going to push back onto those heels, walk those hands forward, keep, those he keep the head in between your arms. Okay, now side position. You'll see that my knees are slightly flared out and it's still one inch off the floor, hands out. So while my feet are pushing back, my hands, my palms are pushing into the ground and forward. So again, this is not a very passive movement. Uh, once you're in this position, everything should be activated in the loaded knees position. So again, for bear crawl, we're gonna step back onto our heels and reach out. Make sure your head isn't too far up and don't curl in either head directly in between your two arms. Now, why am I teaching you this movement? Later on, we'll be able to connect all these movements into a flow pattern. This is why we have to by the way. Okay. Next up, we're gonna do a front step. So from this loaded beast position, you're gonna take that left leg and step. You can do it with the left side as well. Step. Lift the uh, corresponding arm up as well. I will turn face you guys so you can see the movement in this direction. Okay? So maybe diagonally. Loaded beast. You're gonna step forward, lift that arm up, get it out of the way. Bring it back. Okay, let's try the right side together now. Step. Bring it back to the left side. And last time for the right step. Okay. Now here's where it starts to get fun. From that step, we are gonna follow through with the kick through. Okay, again, these are all very controlled movements, so don't rush it. From the load of these, left front step, and kick it through. Okay, let's try the other side. Right step. Step in here. Bring that leg through. Kick it straight forward in front of you. Make sure your toes are pointing straight in front of you. And there's minimal space on the ground. Okay, so not too high. Keep it nice. Close to the ground at all times. Okay? Let's try two more, one on each side, together. Get the technique right. Knees flared out. You're gonna step, kick it through, and back. You're gonna step and kick it through, and bring it back. Not too bad, right? And definitely requires a little bit of coordination. Okay. Last but not least for the, the first segment of movements, we're gonna be doing something called frog squats, very similar to what you guys were doing at the beginning during the warm-ups. Okay, feet, shoulder width apart. Gonna bend at the, at the waist. Have those elbows in between your knees. So you can bend your knees slightly if you, if you need. From here, you're gonna bring your bum down to your calves, or as far as you can. Okay, so whether it's this far, just bring it down as far as you can. And you'll see that my, think of your elbows being connected to your knees, okay? So don't let them go at any point. You stay down nice and 
low during your frog squats. Okay? Keep it nice and low. You really start to feel that burn after a couple of breaths. Okay? So those are frog squats. Okay. Woo. Now that you guys have all the basics in hand, we're gonna weave this into a little two minute AMRAP that we'll be doing together. Okay? And AMRAP, that means you're gonna do as many reps as possible within the given time. So let me give you today's AMRAP. There are only three movements that you need to remember. We'll be in a bear crawl. We'll be doing shoulder taps, okay? So again, try to keep the rest of your body as stable as possible when you're tapping your shoulders. Controlled movements, try not to lean too much as you're tapping, okay? You really wanna work every muscle in your body. Um, bear crawl or beast in particular really works with shoulders, core, and your legs. Okay, so we'll be doing eight of these. Moving into eight frog squats, and then followed by four front kick throughs, okay? The kick throughs you guys did earlier, this count as one. So you're gonna do two on each side, essentially. So eight, eight, and four, all right? So I'm gonna set my timer here for just two minutes. We'll do this together. Start in about 10 seconds, waiting for this timer. So eight spare shoulder taps to start in three, two, and one. Seven, eight. Move into those frog hooks. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now four front stickers. One. Make sure I'm not saying my head. Two. Three. Four. And now we're going to reach that back to bear crawl, shoulder tap. Remember, do this at your own pace. If you can go faster, go faster. If you need to go slower, go slower. Okay, just at your own time. We have one minute left. And back into frog squats. Remember, stay nice and low. Moving into those front kickers. Okay, and reset back to bear crawls. 30 seconds left. That might be enough time. Finish one more set. For example, looks a lot like child pose. I want to make uh, emphasize there is a difference between flow movement, movement and yoga movement. But if you are a yogi, you can probably pick up these movements a lot easier. Okay, so I highly encourage you to uh, practice as many disciplines as possible. These particular movements have been inspired by uh, not just animals, but um, it's kind of combined a, a variety of disciplines. Uh, the best of variety uh, of disciplines into one. For example, mixed martial arts, parkour, uh, gymnastics, and b-boy. 
um, and other types of martial arts. So I, I really, really advocate um, working a lot of these mobility movements. It really keeps yourself moving um, and helps prevent injury. And this is also a great warm up before doing some of your other things like weight training, for example, because you can see that it's activating a lot of different parts of your body. Okay, now, when our break is over, we're gonna go into the second set of basics. And then we're gonna do one more mini circuit. And after that, we're gonna do the fun stuff, we'll weave it all together into a flow movement. Okay, so now we're gonna flip all over to the other side. We did a lot of stuff on our hands and knees. We're gonna flip over into, guess another animal, the crab. All right. You're gonna start with your fingers pointing away from your body. And obviously your feet will be pointing away from your body as well. Um, you wanna make sure that your hip is positioned in the center between the two, okay? So you can use a mirror or just kind of rock back and forth to try and find that center position. Make sure you're not too close to your feet, you're not too close to your hands. Okay, so rock back and forth, find that center position. From here, you're gonna make sure your shoulders, chest are open. Put those shoulder blades back to touch as far as possible. Chin up, looking straight ahead. Okay, so you wanna avoid collapsing your posture. We want good posture here, so keep it nice and open. There's almost a, uh, um, almost arching your spine just a bit here. Now you're gonna lift your hip off the floor. One inch is the magic number. You, you'll be hearing me say that a lot. Just an inch off the floor for your basic crab position. Now from here, and I love doing this particular move, the crab reach. It's a great stretch to do in the morning, midday when you're stuck at your, after you're getting stuck at your desk all day, or even before you go to bed. From here, let's start with our left hand first. When you take your left hand, lift it up, hold it by your chest, partially for style. From here, you're gonna drive your hips up towards the ceiling. You're gonna look back at your hand and reach over with your left hand. Okay, so make sure it's not too far far forward, keep it as aligned as possible for the crab reach. Okay, I'm going to drop that hip, put that hand back down, let's try the right side. Bring that hand up, drive that hip up towards the ceiling, look back at your hand on the, on the floor, and reach over with your right. And back down. Okay, let's try the left side one more time together. Now that you guys kind of know what's up, drive that hip up, look back, your hand, and reach. And back down. And the other side, right side, reach. And back down. All right, so that's a basic crab and crab reach positions. Ooh. There's also something called beast reach. Okay, now we're gonna flip back onto the other side now that we've had our little break from our loaded beast position. Now this is called beast reach, to emphasize the name again. Knees are off the floor. Make sure I don't push the mats too far apart. All right. You're gonna lift that hip up high. Bring that knee towards your elbow. You'll see that my shoulders are extended past my wrists. Look straight in front of you and bring it back. Okay, so that was the right side. Let's try our left leg now. Hips up. Bring that knee up nice and slow to your elbow. Kind of, even kind of lean it against your arm there for support and bring it back. Okay, so the beast reach, um, you can do it at varying speeds. But obviously, the slower you do it, the more you're really working every fiber. Okay, so let's do each side one more time. Hips up, bring that knee forward, and back down. Other side, hips up, bring that knee forward, and back down. That's the beast reach. So you have two reaches now, the crowd reach and the beast reach. Last but not least, 
Um, you guys did the front kick through with me just now. We'll be doing side kick throughs. You're also known as kick sits. We actually have a lot of different names. All right, so we're gonna start in our basic beast position on all fours. Knees off the floor. You're gonna pivot your supporting foot. So your left foot lifts that left arm, kick it out to the side. Bring it back. And we're gonna try the other side. Extend that left leg. And you can see I'm extending from foot to shoulder, creating as long of a line as possible. And bring it back. Okay, let's try both sides again. And left. All right, so that's a side kick through or kick sit. And uh, now we're gonna do all these movements and get a workout out of it. Okay, so we'll set a timer again. Um, you were gonna do this set twice, but if there's extra time and you've already finished both sets, do it again. So do as many as possible, but try to fit in at least two. Okay, we're gonna start with crab position. We're gonna do crab toe touches. Okay, so again, make sure your fingers are pointing outwards. Arch that back, chest open. You're gonna lift that hip, touch that toe. That's one count. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay? Now you're gonna flip over to the other side. Let's work on those beast reaches. We're gonna do 10 beast reach, one count per side. Okay, so let's do that together. Ready, and one, two, three, four, five, Up, we're gonna do 10 kick sits. Okay, so one count per side. Remember also to breathe. Okay, so don't hold your breath um, in any workout for the matter. Remember to breathe with each breath. All right, now let's do those kick sits. We're gonna be doing 10. Deep breath, knees up, and kick to the side, down. Two, down, three. Make sure those knees stay nice and close to the ground, okay? So when you're pivoting and you're doing the movement, don't compromise form. If you're unsure, just remember at all points, your knees and legs should be only one inch off the floor. Five, six, seven, eight, Nine and ten. All right, now we're going to flip back over for crab. We're just going to do four crab reaches, two on each side. All right, again, remember chest open, keep that hip nice in the middle, and one. One more time. Okay, so 10, 10, 10, and then the last with the four crab reaches. 10 crab toe touches. 10 reach. 10 hip sits. And then the four crab reaches. Okay, so let's do that. Now, at your own pace, I'll be doing along with you guys. Give you 60 seconds to finish the whole set. Okay? All right, let's go. One. Six, 
seven, eight, nine, and ten. Let's go into the knees to reach. Back straight over. And last one. Last but not least. Sorry, it's not the last one. Second to last. Kick yours. Five more seconds. Three, two, and one. Okay, so we're doing another 60 second water break. Towel off, catch your breath. Stretch out your wrist if you need to. Uh, remember, we got a couple movements that we can do here. You can also just hold your wrist, massage it lightly. Now, after this, we're gonna be going to flow, meaning we're gonna connect all these movements into um, a sequence instead of a simple workout. Um, it's probably one of my favorite parts about flow is the actual flow. Okay. Don't drink too much water either in the middle of actually any workout, but including um, flow and mobility stuff because you can really feel that water come back up um, later during your workout. Hmm. All right. Now, to connect all these movements, especially flipping from crab to beast and vice versa, there is something for that. It's called the under switch. Okay. Now we're gonna start from beast and all fours. You're gonna use the supporting foot. Let's start with the left. Lift the right and the left hand and flip it over. And you can continue rolling. Okay, now you're gonna lift your left leg and your right hand to under switch. Okay, so let's try that again in the same direction. It does take a little coordination and getting used to, but once you get it, it'll be like riding a bicycle. It just uh, comes quite naturally. So again, keep your knee, your leg as close to the ground as possible. Okay? And rotate it around. Okay? One more time now. Same direction. I'm gonna lift that right foot, pivot the left, bring it around. I'm gonna lift your left foot and the right hand around. Okay, now let's go the other way. Uh, all right, now the supporting foot, you're going to start with the right foot, lift the left, lift that left foot, bring it around, and continue by lifting the right and the left. Okay, I'll face this way now. So you're gonna rotate past your right shoulder. Lift that left foot, bring it around. Lift that right foot, bring it around. Last time. 
and the switch. And the other. Okay, so that's how you flip from crab to peep or bear. Okay, now, time for the method. Now with that in mind, let's start with these. We're gonna under switch to the left and go into a right arm crab reach. Bring it down and rotate back. Okay, so let's try that again. From B, we're gonna under switch, go straight to into your right arm crab reach and reset. Back in the same direction you came from. Okay, last time. Under switch into a crab reach and back down, bring it back. Now we're gonna do it in the other direction. Okay? So this is a sequence, we're gonna do it all together at the end of this. Under switch, now we're gonna do a left arm crab reach and down, bring it back. Same thing, under switch, crab reach, down, and bring it back. Okay, last time. Woo. My wrists are getting worked up too. Crab, sorry, under switch, into crab, left arm, crab reach, and down. And bring it back. Okay. Now, let's do that last movement, but we're gonna stop at the end of it in a crab position. Under switch to crab, crab reach, and down. Now we're gonna under switch. We're gonna land and go straight into our side of the Okay? So, let's start from the top. We're gonna add that side kick there. Um, the part of the neck. The, the neck in the neck. All right? So, under switch, starting from the beginning. Right arm, crab reach, and down. Get back down. I'm going to switch the other direction. Left arm crab reach. Back down. Now, you're going to under switch straight into side kick through. Okay? You guys got that? Now, we'll start from the beginning again. Under switch. Right arm crab reach. And switch back. Now, in the other direction. Left arm crab reach. And down. Under switch. Into a side kick through, and one more side kick through in the other direction. And reset. Now, after you reset, I want you guys to walk it out into Loaded Beast. Okay? From here, we're gonna step, bring it back, and step with the other foot, bring it back. After that, we're gonna step. Kick through, bring it back, step, kick through, bring it back. Okay? If it's confusing, it's okay. I'll be doing the call outs as we do it along. All right? As we go along. Now let's start from the top. Woo! All right. Under switch, right arm crab reach, and down. Under switch back, the other direction, left arm crab reach. And down, under switch, into that right leg kicks it. And switch to the other side. And reset back to beast. Now load up that beast. From here, left leg step. And back, right foot step. And back. Now front step through, and turn, and right front step through and return okay and that's it for the flow we can do it one last time together now that you guys get the general idea okay all right I'm gonna change position here but we'll be doing the same exact thing just so you guys have another angle on what I'm doing okay Whew. and me Rest my wrist. This is low impact stuff. Look how much I'm sweating. 
And it's not just because there's no air conditioning on right now, but it's a great workout. All right. You guys rested and ready to go. For the last time we're gonna do this flow. Okay, set your beast or bear crawl position. And under switch, straight right arm. Crab reach, down, and switch reset. And the other direction, reach with that left hand, and down, and you're gonna reset into a side kick through. Going to the other side kick through. And set to beast, load up that beast, left step. Loaded beast, right step. Loaded beast. Okay, now we're gonna kick through. We're gonna step with the other leg, kick through, reset, and rest. And that's it. Welcome to doing your first flow for many of you. Uh, great job, I hope you guys are feeling good about it. Um, these are the very, very basics, the very fundamentals. And like anything else, there's a lot more to it. There are a lot more events, moves as you progress. Okay, so I think it's a very exciting uh, form of movement, and if you liked it, I highly recommend that you practice these basics first. Again, like any sport, fundamentals, foundations, basics are key, because once you get those, it's very easy to pick up the fancier looking stuff. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoy that. Um, my name is Victoria Chang. You know, stay fit, stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you guys around. Bye. <laughs>